I on the YouTubes? Am I on the YouTubes yet? Am I on the Facebooks? <laughs> So before we begin today, let's recap real quick. I had one or a couple broken seals in this SS-180 engine, so I tore it apart, rebuilt the clutch, burnt the old clutch a little bit, and put most of the engine back together. With stage one complete, it's time to move to stage two, which is ignition. Before I got to the ignition, I needed to pack the bearing and mount the seal, as this is a double sealed and closed bearing that does not get lubrication from petrol. So I started mounting the old ignition, which is a point ignition with three coils, and it has an output of 6 volt. The ignition looked really good, but thinking about having a 6 volt bike, and I want to write this a lot, with points, yeah, no. Let's bring this bike into the 21st century by throwing money at it. All right, Vespatronic. This thing is made by Quattrini and it comes with a whole bunch of stuff. The flywheel is way lighter than the original one. It's also smaller. It weighs around 1.5 kilos, which should give us great throttle response. The stator plate, which is really neat. It has a system where you can only mount it one way, which we'll get into later. The kit also comes with a holding tool for the flywheel. Like so many variable ignitions, the Vespatronic comes with a three-coil stator. which has a pretty high output of about 90 watts at peak power. Quattrini provides you with all the little connectors that you need and a regulator, as well as a CDI with a variable ignition timing curve. I like the variable ignition because not only does it keep your bike safe in terms of temperature, it also gives you really good throttle response. A variable ignition changes your ignition timing depending on your RPM, as you can see in here on the red curve. At idle, you sit around 23 degrees before top dead center, and it drops all the way down to 16 at 7000 or even 15 above 7000 RPM. This way you get the best of both worlds, and you don't have to compromise by throwing too much heat into your engine. Looking at the green curve, we can see that at idle, the bike produces about uh, 35 watts and it just shoots up all the way up to 90 watts depending on the RPM. I decided to go all LED lights on the scooter, which allows us to run everything off the battery, but we will get into this in a future video. So first, let's remove the points ignition again. When I first threw the stator plate on the engine, I was a bit confused about its positioning. But I found a video on the internet which explained exactly this. As you can see, in this position, it doesn't go. This position, you can't fit a bolt either. It's only in one position where you can fit a bolt. With that finally figured out, all I need to do is mount a stator plate on the stator and fiddle all the wiring through. There is wiggle room in adjusting the timing. But first I want to throw it on and see if it runs and then we go from there. Here's a good comparison between the old flywheel and the new one. The old one's way heavier, also way bigger.
The holding tool came quite in handy when tightening this thing down. With the engine together, the carburetor mounted, I needed to figure out fuel system, which I did, all, I did all this stuff off camera because it's rather boring. And it was time to fire it up for the first time. So this is my first actual test ride on the scooter. I need At this point I need to jet the carburetor, I need to time the ignition properly, but it runs pretty good. Dare I say, it even lifts the front wheel a little bit if you try. The work on the engine really paid off, the thing feels really good on the throttle. And despite a few mild rattles that I still gotta fix, which is related to the chassis, it feels really good to ride. It doesn't feel like a bike from 1965. At all. The next step in this build is to put a completely new wiring harness in so the whole bike can run off DC. And this will be the subject of a future video. With the end of this video, we wrap up 2018. We all wish you a happy new year and see you in January.